anything that we needed to do beforehand? Um, yeah, if you just want to start completing my, so uh, have you taken a look at the project at all? Uh, uh, a little bit. Um, I, I know there was, oh yeah, you have to clone the repo, right? Yeah, that's all I would do to get started, is just like clone that repo, uh, run npm install, and then, like fire up your editor. So basically, the way we can, uh, the way we'll do this is, uh, I've shared my screen, so if anyone can't see my screen, let me know. What you can do is fire up your editor and code along with me. Um, because I'm going to be basically taking you through each of the milestones in this project, and you know, if you are working along alongside me, we can pause if you have any questions. You can share your screen, and we can talk through questions. Um, so to get started, uh, I'll just show you what the final product is supposed to look like. Uh, so it's re really simple, uh, or at least it's really like not flashy. Um, so this app, the, the basic brief is that we're building a single page app for generating new music suggestions based on the band you already like. What that means, translated, is that we have uh, a very simple kind of H1, uh, and then also an input that takes an artist's name, so I'll just type in Radiohead, um, and if I hit search, it's going to then spit out a bunch of links um, related to Radiohead. And as part of the brief, I also want to be able to explore artists that are returned in this search. Um, and so I can click blur, and it's going to search separately and then update those results. Um, if you're coding alongside me at this point, you should have, uh, so I'll go ahead and kill the server. Uh, at this point, um, all I've done is I've cloned the repo. Um, so I'm going to npm install. The app is set up so that it's just, again, it's just a single page app, meaning that we have a very, very simple server that's written in Node. And all that server is doing is it's serving up um, HTML and JavaScript. So I have this index.html file, which is containing my single page app. And I'm going to include in that index.html file an app.js, which is going to contain all the compiled JavaScript in my app. I'm going to go ahead and run npm start. So if you just clone this repo and you run npm install, and what that's going to do is that's going to load this. You can see uh, it's going to load this bulk file, which is going to take this process from um, the client, the code in the client app or in the client folder, and then compile that into a build folder. So you can see there's a build folder, and this is all that's basically the components of my front end app. So it's index.html. And then it's an app.js file that's compiled, which includes the React library. It also includes um, the code that I've written, which at this point is very little. Uh, and if I load uh, localhost 1337, uh, which is the most elite port you can develop on, um, then it's all you're going to get is just a simple hello world. So, and now, like the cool thing about React is what's going to happen when I type in the artist name. Uh, and I click search, um, you can see that handle search click, which is the name of that search click function, that's printed out into the uh, uh, console. Render is actually triggered because we've updated the state of our app. So when you trigger this dot set state, that, that actually causes the render function to run. Uh, this dot state dot suggested artists has nine objects, and each of those nine objects contains the ID and the name um, of that of the band that's supposed to be displayed. Uh, does that make sense, or does that process make sense? Because that's really important for React. Uh, is basically this idea that when you update state, render is going to happen. A rendering is going to happen again, um, and that's going to cause your data on the page to ref to change without obviously the user actually having to press refresh. So set state is the one that calls the render function. Precisely. Well, it's, it's, it's a chain of events, and the chain of events ends with the render function. OK. Any questions so far, or any other questions? I know we're kind of moving rapidly through a project, um, but hopefully this is giving you some guideposts as to like how this thing is actually built out you know, incrementally over time. Uh, I mean, it's really good. I mean, it's a really good introduction. Um, I just, I mean, I have a few more questions. Yeah, you shoot fire away. Um, and uh, I think this is probably the you know, more important question. 
So the you know I'm I'm just going back to that thing, uh, which is you know who invokes the render function, right? So the, the so the moment you call the set state, I mean it goes to the chain and eventually uh, the render function gets called. Yeah. Uh, great. Right. Um, and the set uh, the set state is something that you usually put it in the handler, I suppose, um, or you put it anywhere else in that uh, React class. So at this point, um, we're just building a component completely from scratch, um, and it's this is what's called a dumb component, which is basically something that all I'm wanting to do with this component is just render some spit, uh, some simple like div and anchor tag. Um, I don't necessarily, whereas with app.jsx, that's like a what's called a smart component. Um, that means that with app inside app.jsx, I'm going to actually make network requests and update state. Whereas inside artist.jsx, all I'm going to do is actually just um, render a static, you know, uh, link that's going to change every time the render function in app.jsx is triggered. So I think it'll make a little bit more sense as we work through it. 